Hello, everyone. This is Mike Daniels. I'm uh, with USDA Rural Development. I've uh, been with the federal government oh, quite some time. Uh, started out back in the old Farmer's Home Administration days, and I've been uh, working with Value at it for uh, since 2008. First in, in Wisconsin here, uh, and now since 2004, I've been working out of the national office as one of the co-leads for uh, Value Add Producer Grant. So um, I, I know that we have a, a short period of time here, so I have a lot to get through. Um, I'm going to kind of do a high level um, uh, view of, of the, the program. And, uh, and if you have questions, uh, please feel free to, uh, to um, interrupt, to uh, ask questions as we go. Um, Ashley, can you record, please? It's recording. Okay. All right. Um, so value add producer grant, it um, uh, provides uh, funds for economic planning or working capital expenses uh, for ag producers. Uh, we, this is a nationwide program that we, we run. Um, what is it? What isn't it? It's not a job training program. It's not intended to teach people how to farm. It's not R&D or a loan program. Um, it's available to, as we said, to ag producers. Uh, the RFA is open right now. Uh, the applications are due by the uh, uh, 11th if you're going through grants.gov of April or if your paper applications, emailed, et cetera, they, they're due by the 16th of April. Um, the maximum grant, as in the past several years, has been seventy-five thousand for planning and two hundred fifty thousand for working capital. There is a dollar-for-dollar dollar match to this this program. Uh, reserve funds are are available for socially disadvantaged and um, beginning farmers, mid-tier value chain, and persistent poverty counties. Uh, we'll go through applicant project purpose uh, uh, eligibility and then get into uh, evaluation criterion. So you have to be one of the four uh, eligible uh, producers, independent producer for agricultural producer co-op, farmer or rancher co-op or majority owned business based venture. So the ag producer group that would be a nonprofit organization like a, a group of uh, um, uh, soybean growers, uh, the ag co-op, just the majority of the, the members of the co-op have to be uh, independent producers and the majority control business-based venture, a majority, so that'd be like an LLC, a majority of the um, members of the LLC have to be ag producers. Um, so what does it mean to be an ag producer, an individual or entity that produces ag commodities through participation in day-to-day -day labor management and field operations? Uh, all four applicants must currently produce and own more than 50% of the raw commodity that be used in the value of product or own the product from its raw commodity state through the production of the value added product during the project. Project eligibility. So you have to meet one of the five, five following uh, methodologies, a change in physical state. So you have to take your strawberries, you're now going to make strawberry jam, produce in a manner that enhances the value of the ag commodity. So that'd be like um, organic uh, foods, physical segregation, that'd be like uh, corn, uh, non-GMO corn that is grown away from GM genetically genetically modified corn, uh, farm or ranch-based renewable energy, or locally produced food product. The locally produced food product has to be sold within the state or within 400 miles of where the uh, commodity is grown. So in larger states, you have, like in St. Texas, you would have it would have to be sold within the state of Texas. Or if it's, it can also go across state lines if you're like in the southeastern part of Wisconsin, uh, you do a concentric circle from where you're at, and that would be uh, um, within 400 miles of that to be uh, considered a, a methodology. Um, Hemp-based products uh, with the 2018 Farm Bill 
uh, was uh, changed so we can now do hemp products. The one thing with hemp pro projects, though, it has to, it really needs to be um, for uh, anything that is non CBD based. Uh, so if you're dealing with uh, fibers, that, that's going to be fine. The issue with uh, CBD, um, uh, Food and Drug Administration uh, oversees that and they have not approved that uh, CBD base as a uh, eligible, so we we do need to stay away from CDB CDB projects. All projects must uh, show an increase in customer base and show that there's a larger percentage of uh, uh, gains going back to the producer. What can be what can it be used for? It can be used for planning grants or working capital. So the planning grant really is there if you don't know. Um, the your market you don't know uh the your price points it, um you don't know um what you can sell it for what the cost of production is going to be we can help with a, a business plan feasibility study marketing plan to uh do that to come up with determine whether it's an L, a, a feasible venture I've had planning grants that I've worked with in the past where it says it's not feasible. And I, the individual that did it, that would do it, they're like upset that uh, he thought they were, that we would be upset but that showed that it didn't work, that it wasn't viable. By no means are we, would be, we'd be upset. It's answering a question. It's answering whether this is a viable venture and where the government is here to help to, to share that, that risk with the entrepreneur. If you know where you're selling it to, you know your markets, you know your price points, you know that it's a viable venture, then we'd be looking at working capital. And that's really the workhorse of, of this program. So the working capital is there to um, help really, um, uh, you know, pr produce the product, it, you know, to pr produce the value added product. So, you know, anything after the 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 harvesting of the ag commodity so if you're growing strawberries you're going to make strawberry jam everything after the the strawberries pick so cleaning the strawberries chopping them up the labor to do that the um uh power to to cook the strawberries the sugar and pectin that would go into the jam the jars labels and lids the your distribution cost to, to get your strawberry jam to market your um uh advertising cost uh, to advertise your value add product. So I, I use strawberries just as a real generic term, but it, it can be, you know, for any ag commodity. Um, working capital request, there's a couple different types of requests of 50,000 more is emerging market, uh, 50,000 more for market expansion or simplified less than 50,000. So uh, emerging market, um, really is going to be uh, for any of the group type applicants like the egg, egg um, producer group, the uh, farmer rancher co-op majority owned business based venture, you would need for 50,000 or more, you would need a fe feasibility study. Uh, market expansion is going to be for independent producers that are just expanding their market into uh, expanding the market of their value add product into a new market. Matching funds, we always get a lot of questions on matching funds. Uh, matching funds, uh, you know, we really look at um, matching funds from a lot of different perspectives. Um, I, we kind of, when when I was in the field, I would uh, advise my, my clients, you know, really look at what what is the uh, value of your ag commodity, um, you know, that you're going to be using it. So if you're working at, using a uh, working capital, you know, so what, what's the value of those strawberries before they're made into strawberry jam? That's eligible. Um, the, the the value of your time as you're producing your ag commodity or you're producing the value add product or selling the value add product, that your time is worth money. So um, that can be uh, that that can be considered as in kind as part of matching funds. There note to that though, you can't exceed 25% of the total project costs for the in kind, the applicant in kind, um, and then cash or third party cash or third party in kind are also eligible for uh, the eligible use of uh, types of matching funds. 
Um, again, it has to be uh, at least um, eligible to the grant amount, so dollar for dollar match. Um, what we can't do is um, say you have, uh, you're buying a piece of equipment. Um, equipment is not eligible for value added, so we couldn't use that the the cost of that that piece of equipment that you're buying as part of your match. It has to be for the uh, on it has to be spent on eligible expenses, um, and it has to be from uh, someone without an apparent conflict of interest. Ineligible uses of funds, um, el eligible use of planning grant funds pay for qualified consultant due to feasibility study, business plan, or marketing plan. Um, common ex examples of uh, eligible use of working capital pay the cost for produ producing the raw commodity into value added product, packaging, labeling, the ingredients, promotional materials, advertising, things of that nature. Um, ineligible use of uh, funds. Really, again, we're taught we can't we we can't allow it to be paid for the actual production of the ag commodity, uh, planning, building, or repairing facilities, um, use of grant funds to pay yourself or associated parties. Um, two CFR two hundred does not allow for um, grant funds to go back to the grantee. Um, ineligible equipment expenses. Again, we as I said before, we can't. Uh, allow equipment for that you would need to uh, process your value added uh, um, product. Uh, those, those are not eligible. Um, the equipment is not eligible. But what I've also uh, I would also tell people is while we can't pay for the cost of buying um, uh, a processing line or uh, things of that nature, what we can do is uh, we can pay for that labor to to bottle the wine or to do something along those lines. Um, what we, which would free up your cash flow in order to for you to buy uh, the equipment that you need. When when we talk about equipment expenses, though, under two CFR two hundred, equipment is defined as anything greater than five thousand dollars. So if you're looking at small PC, uh, small equipment, like say you, you need to buy a freezer or a, um, a a bottle filler for wine or something that's under five thousand, those would be eligible expenses for that we could allow uh, for equipment to be purchased if it's as long as it's under five thousand um, dollars. If there are el ineligible expenses within a, an application, as long as they don't exceed 10%, we would continue with processing the application. And then if awarded, we would uh, look at swapping those uh, ineligible expenses out with eligible expenses. Evaluation criterion. So each application is going to be scored on these uh, points here, na the nature of the proposed project, qualification of the personnel, commitments to the project, and work plan and budget. And then it, uh, can there's priority points that are available for certain groups, and we'll get into that in a little bit later. So the priority points can be for beginning farmers, veteran or farmers, socially dis disadvantaged, mid-tier, small or medium-sized farm structure to the farm family, or farmer, rancher, co-op. Note that you can only apply for one of the, the the points. So what I would what we normally talk talk with people about is pick the one that you can uh, most easily easily uh, qualify for. So if you're a beginning farmer, if you've only been farming for less than ten years, uh, that's pretty easy to prove. Um, so, but any one of these are are eligible for up to five points. And then if you're um, an ag producer group, farmer co-op, or majority-owned business-based venture, if you're expanding market opportunities for far beginning farmers, veteran farmers, socially disadvantaged, or smaller, medium-sized medium family farms, those are going to be, uh, you'll, you're eligible up to an additional five priority points in those categories. Uh, give you kind of an idea where we've been at with value added um, since 2020. That's when when Greg and I started in the um, in, in the national office working with it. Um, we've received a little over uh, 2,300 applications, totaling 358 million dollars. 
um, eligible applications were 1,640, of which we funded 1,170 um, applications for just under two, $200 million. So as you can see, we've we've this is a, a program that is well oversubscribed. Um, our our funding uh, is around is right now we have about thirty million that's available for this year. Um, we don't know what our full funding is until Congress passes a, a full year um, budget or a full year continuing resolution. Um, so we may have some more money that's available. It's really uh, what we do know is what we have right now is the the money from the farm bill, the mandatory funding that we have, and so um, you know, we know that we have at least thirty million, but we're hoping that we will get some more funding through appropriations. Um, this is how broken out by applicant type, as we talked about before. Independent producers, by and large, is our largest, uh, most popular group that uh, applies for the for the funding. Um, look at some of the priority uh, point uh, priorities that are that we fund beginning farmers, uh, socially disadvantaged, small and medium sized. Um, if, if we look at this, only um, 250 basically applicants uh, do not get any priority funding. So um, I, I think this is a testament to to the the program that we are reaching um, a, a a good number of individuals across the country that uh, do uh, qualify for priority uh, points. Uh, the methodology, kind of talking about what we you know through earlier in the presentation, change of physical state is by far the the largest. Uh, uh, group of uh, applicants. One that has been coming on a lot stronger over the past several years is uh, the locally produced uh, ag commodities. Um, so the local um, lo local farms the, where they're selling within 400 miles of where the, pro the commodity was produced. Um, plan work planning uh, capital is by far the the largest majority of what the the awards are. Um, I, I actually would like to see more planning grants uh, being uh, applied for. I think that's uh, that's a step that we're missing because with the planning grants, while you you you're um, you can't can't produce the ag commodity. What what it does do is does if you're looking to go beyond um, where you're at, it gives the ability to uh, have uh, a document that you can take to a lender to um, help with your financing uh, if you're looking at other at um, if you need more funding than what what the working capital would have available. Tools for applying. Um, we have work. We have uh, toolkits for planning and working capital, and that's on our our website. Um, and be, uh, what I can do is after I'm done, what I'll do is I'll drop into uh, the chat or send it to you guys uh, what that what that web page is, so you have the the documents for that. Um, contact information: Greg York, uh, my counterpart, and myself more than happy to to work to answer any questions that you may have uh, beyond today. Um, we, we as we're, we're committed to this program. Um, I, I believe in it. Um, it's it's been a, a good program for a lot of uh, entrepreneurs to be able to take instead of just taking what the market gives you to be able to go beyond and to make your uh, ag your ag operations uh, more viable. 